Hey guys, uh, this is your host Seishu again uh, with Tiffin Cast, and I would like to welcome our guest today, Danny Diamond, who's now a photographer based in Waterbury, Connecticut. And you know, uh, Danny and I connected thanks to F Stoppers and their wonderful uh, review of his work uh, in the project, which we'll talk about in a bit. But Danny, I wanted to ask you, how did you get started in photography? Um, when I was in business school, I had a friend who used to walk around with a camera and I approached him and I asked, the first question I asked him was, how do photographers um, take a picture of a person and blur out the background? How do they, is that something the camera does? Is that something you do in Photoshop? And little did I know that it was actually the lens which does that and he told me all about aperture and things like that and that was the first of many questions I asked him and since then, it's, it's taken off and photography is something I do full-time now. That's fantastic. Um, now, recently, as in a couple of days ago, your uh, work was profiled in the wonderful blog F-Stoppers and that's how we actually connected. I mean, I saw your work there and I, I was just completely fell in love with the way you approached your, uh, your, your subjects, how you photograph them. Let's talk a little bit about the project, which is what <clears throat> you're calling it. What is the project? Basically, I've been part of many different groups on Facebook with a lot of other photographers and I always wanted to meet each and every photographer that I've been following and people who have been following my work. And I came up with the idea of meeting each photographer that I know and taking a headshot of them. I thought it would be the perfect way to meet them and, and somehow bring everyone together into one place and that's how the project was created. Excellent. You reached out to folks uh, e either in Connecticut or New York who follow you and you've gone out to f meet with them, hung out with them, photographed them and do you typically give them the picture or is it just sort of for your uh, website or your Facebook group? What do you, how do you do with the pictures? Um, it started off with um, friends, people that I know, and neighbors who are photographers and I would take their picture, give it to them, and normally they would use it as their Facebook profile picture, and then all their photographer friends would see it, and then a couple of them would come to me and ask me, and so I started the, the group, and and now we have photographers all over the place who who come, they get their head, I meet them, I give them their picture, they use it as their profile picture, and so on and so forth, and that's how the whole thing grew. Do you find, though, uh, even though you've, you've got people coming to you to f have them photograph you, you know, have you photograph them, do you, do you find people being shy or coy or somewhat difficult to work with? Or is it, um, is it, are they all, all easy to work with? I think basically all the photographers, it starts off the same. The first thing they tell me is, by the way, I've never been in front of a camera before. I'm shy. I don't come out good in pictures. But for some reason, you're making everyone look good, and I wanna, I wanna be one of the people in front of your camera. So I first start off talking to them, asking them about their photography. Um, we walk around for like 20, 30 minutes and just talk before I even show them my camera or pull it out. And once I do, I take a handful of pictures, I show it to them, and and um, once they see pictures of themselves like hey I like that I like that you know what do that do that pose again I like the way I was smiling there how my eyes came out and usually once they see pictures of themselves that's what loosens them up and lets me take more pictures um, a lot of times actually I would let them take pictures of me first and that's what made them feel comfortable with me and then I would turn the camera back around and start shooting them so how many photographers have you photographed so far? Um, so far it's about 30 and 21 are actually public that I edited and put up. What is your typical workflow when it comes to these pictures? I mean obviously the, these are not paying clients so do you come back to them whenever you find the time or do you just quickly uh, massage them into a picture that you really like and post them on, on the site? Um, it depends on the photographer and the situation and depending if I was busy or not. Sometimes as soon as I get back home, that before I edit pictures to any of my paid photo shoots, I would just want to edit their picture just because I, I thought I got this great shot that I can't get over. Um, but I do try to put my paid jobs first and then 
do these headshots. And I have usually, um, I'm always ahead by five headshots, which are not public yet, like that in case I'm traveling or away from the computer for a week, I could just upload it from my phone. That's terrific. How does your work doing uh, the project translate to your paid work? I mean, is there a connection between what you do uh, for pure joy and what you hopefully do for pure joy but also get paid? Um, one of the biggest connections is that it's making me better with shooting portraits and people and it's making me feel more comfortable taking pictures of people. If I could master taking pictures of photographers, I could t master taking pictures of... I have mastered taking portraits in general because photographers are usually the ones which are not comfortable being in front of the camera. Isn't, isn't that ironic? I mean, isn't that really ironic about how photographers are so difficult to work with sometimes? <laughs> They're the most critical people. That's what makes them photographers. Are you comfortable in front of the camera right now? Um, <laughs> truth be told, uh, a, little, a little shy, but... You know what, if I'm making other people get in front of my camera, I better be comfortable being in front of the camera myself. So, It's important to know, uh, for us to know, uh, what inspires you in general? Um, my biggest inspiration for photography is the people who follow my work and, and my family, and especially my wife. People who support me and... And the best feeling is when you upload a picture on Facebook or Instagram, wherever it is, and within an hour you have a hundred people liking that. And th those are just the people liking it. Who knows how many people are looking at it, you know? Absolutely. That's, there's no feeling like that. Let's dig a little deeper, if you don't mind. Um, clearly, uh, photography came to you just recently, right? Uh, as recently as when? When did you start photographing full-time? Um, I graduated business school three years ago, about three years ago, and I picked up my camera the day I... Um, I finished school, so it's been three years since I've touched a DSLR camera. Excellent. So I mean, you've you've gone from uh, a business major to a photographer. Is there? A, is, are you bridging the the, the gap there? Um, I try to apply what I learned in business school to my business, and um, that's that's basically the only connection I have. But it definitely did help me going to business school because I believe that. The great photographers out there are the great businessmen. If you're a businessman, you're going to know exactly how to market yourself the right way. How did F-Stoppers find you? Um, I'm part of the F-Stoppers group for photographers, which is about 10,000 followers who are in one group, and they um, share photos, comment and critique each other's work, and so... I was posting my headshots of photographers in that group and the members of F-Stoppers were seeing my work and I, I asked one of my friends working in F-Stoppers if this is the kind of thing that they would, they would be interested in. That's when I made the video and officially made it the project. Excellent. How long is this project going to go on for? Is there an end date or is it just something that's going to continue going and going and going until... You know, whenever. It's it's hard to say um, if I'm going to put an end to this because I love doing this and it's so amazing meeting all these photographers all over the place. But I do want to put out a book at at one point with a collection of the headshots. Maybe it's the first fifty or a hundred headshots. So we'll see if uh, if my job allows me to continue doing the, the project. I definitely will do it. That's great. It's great to hear that the images are going to go beyond being just on Facebook into something more tangible like a book. Um, I was thinking perhaps even a of like a gallery show, you know, where yeah. you can have something up on a wall. That's a great idea. I, I actually do want to do that eventually also, hopefully. It's, a, it's another dream. Indeed. So indeed. we'll see. What other dreams do you have? Um, besides for portraits, landscapes is my is my real hobby and something that I don't do to get paid for. I do it because I purely enjoy it. I enjoy taking pictures of the sun and sunsets, water, ocean. I love that stuff. And hopefully one day I could print those and sell them. We'll see. Excellent. Um, when it comes to uh, your own business as a photographer, 
Uh, you are a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer. What, um, you, what is what is? Your... I mainly I mainly try to stick with fashion photography, men's clothing, suits, dress clothing, things like that. And um, I'm also a product and a couples photographer. So depending on the season, most in the summer you're sticking more to like outdoor portraits. In the winter time, when everything is a little slow, I usually shoot products like jewelry. Oh wow, that's. That's quite a departure from <laughs> yeah, headshots, isn't it? Headshots, products, seascapes, landscapes, trying yes. to hit up all the different corners of photography. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, 20 years from now, Danny, how do you think you're going to be remembered? Um, it's, it's hard to say. Honestly, I don't, I don't know. How would you, you like to be remembered? If, <laughs> I mean, how, what work that you've done so far would you like to be remembered by? Somewhere between the shooting the like portraits and doing the nature, like landscapes and seascapes. But if you asked me three years ago what I would want to be doing, I would have answered you, I want to be sitting, working behind a desk nine to five. Who would have thought I would be doing photography? So it's hard to say 20 years from now, who knows? Indeed, indeed. Isn't it a relief that you are not sitting behind a desk, <laughs> crunching still... <laughs> numbers and, and figuring out what to do with your, your so-called business well, instead life? Instead of sitting behind the desk 9 to 5, I do it 24-7 now. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting is maybe one-tenth of the job, right, you know? Right, right. You're always sitting behind the computer editing. Right. We talked a little bit before the camera started recording this conversation, uh, how you've gone digital obviously you've never uh, shot with film but you've sort of I heard from you a little inkling that you meant you'd like to try shooting film is that true um, I believe that people who shot film actually had to understand light a lot better than we do now when I first picked up my camera uh, I like to say I was a spray and pray kind of guy. I would just shoot and shoot and shoot and pray that one of the pictures come out good. Mm -hmm. And eventually I learned more about lighting, composition, and but people who are shooting film, there's no such thing. You have to actually master photography and all the technical details in the settings before you can take a picture. So it's definitely something I would love doing. You know, it's really refreshing to hear that perspective from someone who hasn't really worked on film, but who's done digital photography full time. Um, who are your heroes in photography? Um, I don't... It's hard because there's so many different... I'm not asking there's you There's so many different areas of photography that I... Right that I follow. I have my landscape photographers I enjoy following, the wedding photographers, you know, like who doesn't know Jasmine Starr, you know, she's one of the top wedding photographers. And um, yeah, so it's, I have a whole collection of photographers I follow. That's great, that's great. Um, what advice would you give somebody who's starting today with photography? Imagine yourself being, taken back three years where you've just gotten your DSLR camera and you're, you're excited and you want to go out there and make images and you want to make it a business. Um, what advice would you give that person? Two pieces of advice is that it's not about the gear. Honestly, you hear all the photographers say this and I should have told this to myself a thousand times and listened to myself. I had to go and spend thousands of and dollars of, uh, of money on, on pro gear and that's when I finally realized that my pictures are coming out the same way I did with my DX camera and kit lens. What did I need to go buy a full frame camera with some serious glass to, to take pictures? It's the same exact thing. So that's one thing I always tell everyone. A second thing is that don't expect to be good overnight. And I'm, I don't consider myself a professional. I really don't. And it's an ongoing process. You have to practice and practice and practice and stay off of Facebook, stay off of any kind of social media website. You could limit yourself to an hour a day, but shoot and shoot. Instead of sitting there following and talking to people on Facebook, go out and shoot. That's the only way you're going to get better. It's the only way. Danny, thank you so much for really inspiring me. Uh, I, it's been fantastic talking to you and 
thank you and uh, sure. really good luck with, with the project wherever it goes and however it morphs into uh, in, into the future. Thank you. Thank you for interviewing me.